well, we uh, will continue with our next speaker right now. And uh, of course, the uh, recording of the video of Helga Braun will be uh, available on the platform later on. So you can watch the recording. Well, sorry for that. And uh, we hope we can continue without further technical problems from now on. Well, we continue with uh, one more introductory speech and we'll now take a European view. Current status and the future of quantum technologies in Europe. That's the title. And our speaker is Thomas Skodas, and he's today acting deputy director general at the GG DG Connect at the European Commission. He's been with the European Commission since 1995, so he knows it very well by now. And since 2017, has been the director of DG Connect's Digital Excellence and Science Infrastructure Directorate. Thomas, very happy to have you here. Welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. It's a, a real pleasure to be with you. So, and to address you on a subject that is uh, in our heart, and in particular in the heart of my commissioner, Mr. Breton, and uh, the whole team here. And you will see very, very soon why. First of all, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, so I would like to uh, introduce you a little bit into the quantum strategy that we have set up in the uh, European Union for the next 10 years. So, in fact, in, mass, in March this year, the European Commission announced uh, the Digital Decade Strategy, which is aiming to create uh, a Europe that is fit for the digital age. For this, we set out a very ambitious and clear targets that we have to achieve from now to 2030 along four cardinal points. The first one is on upgrading the digital skills and training. The second is about building a secure digital infrastructure in Europe, actually several digital infrastructures. The third is about the digital transformation of the public sector. And the last one is about the digital transformation of industry, the 4.0 industry 4.0 perspectives. But we see also this digital decade as being the quantum decade for Europe. And this is because uh, we perceive that and we forecast that uh, quantum will have a very prominent role uh, uh, to be able to realize the digital decade strategy that I just mentioned. For instance, one of the targets that we have announced in the digital decade communication uh, is to build Europe's first supercomputer with quantum acceleration by 2025 with a view of bringing Europe to the cutting edge of quantum capabilities by 2030. But this is only a very small part of the quantum decade, as we believe that this is the moment to push forward with pan-European strategy for quantum technologies that is involving a multi-billion euro perspective of investments. So let me present to you the key elements of this quantum strategy, which in fact is built around three major pillars. The first, the first major pillar is about research and innovation. The second major pillar is about building ambitious quantum computing and quantum communication infrastructures in, in Europe. And the third major pillar is about building a major, I would say, a quantum industrial ecosystem in Europe with training and skills development and with actions that would aim in standardization and international cooperation. Let me start by addressing the first pillar, which is about research and innovation. Under Horizon Europe, which is the new European Framework Program for Research and Innovation for the period 2021-2027, we plan to invest around 1 billion euros in the next seven years, so as a continued support of the quantum flagship. This flagship we started in 2018, and in the last two years, we have already invested around 150 million euros, and I think we have already achieved a number of notable successes. This, for example, includes the discovery of new materials that are important to build a scalable quantum computer. This also includes advances in quantum computing platforms to be able to move to higher technological readiness levels. And that would allow our researchers, in fact, to build the first experimental machines, truly European quantum computers that are uh, to be installed soon in Europe, all over Europe. And you will see why I'm saying that. Where are we today, actually, with uh, the funding that we have made available from a European perspective? 
we are still at 10 uh, qubit European quantum computers when compared to some others where we have seen that uh, uh, they have already built several uh, uh, tens of qubits. But in fact, we have built a quantum platform that is certainly easy to scale up in the next years. And this is where exactly we expect to come, is to come up with, uh, I would say, uh, uh, scalable platforms that would have several tens of qubits just based on this trapped ion technology that is a very promising one te technology. We've also built several, uh, I would say, uh, we built a lot of research activities on quantum simulators and we will soon reach hundreds of qubits from the quantum simulation perspective. We've also made quite a lot of progress in the next generation of extremely accurate compact optical quantum clocks and actually achieved the world record tunability of photonemeters for quantum communication. So these achievements are really bringing us closer and closer of being able to exploit the enormous potential of quantum technologies in medicine, in manufacturing, in energy, in security, and in many other fields. Under Horizon Europe, the flagship will continue to develop quantum computing, quantum simulation, quantum communication technologies, quantum sensing technologies, and in particular, one of those will be on quantum gravimetry, as well as continue to work on quantum science and competencies and skills. So this is for research and innovation, our first pillar. Let's move now into the second pillar, which is about our strategy to invest in Europe in very ambitious quantum infrastructures, technology infrastructures all over Europe. Let me start by quantum computing. The um, European Council is just about to adopt a new regulation uh, that is uh, uh, related to the uh, EuroHPC joint undertaking. This EuroHPC joint undertaking, which we launched in 2018, will this time invest not only in supercomputing capabilities in Europe, but in particular, one of the new areas where we uh, aim to invest is on quantum computing technologies. So the idea would be uh, to invest both in supercomputers and in quantum computers, wherever necessary also to create hybridization between the two, to interconnect everything together through terabit networks, and to federate everything at European level. The idea would be then to be able to offer this kind of uh, supercomputing facilities, state-of-the-art supercomputing facilities to all our researchers and our users, be it from uh, academia, be it from science in general, or be it from an industry perspective, with the idea to create a fully programmable terrain and space in Europe, which will be accessible to everybody. This is the dream that we have for the next seven years. And on this, just on the quantum computing part, we are ready to invest around 300 million euros, and we expect the member states that are participating in this joint undertaking will actually uh, invest a similar amount. So uh, you see, so it's not only about research and innovation, but it's about translating our research and innovation activities in first of a kind quantum computers, maybe by starting with few qubits in the beginning and a little by little moving very much up with tens of uh, uh, qubits that will be all available to you and that, as I said, programmable for all of you. But at the same time, we're also building in quantum communication infrastructure. Our ambition here is uh, during the quantum decade to be able to uh, uh, build an ultra secure end-to-end -end quantum communication infrastructure, which we call EuroQCI, that will be uh, using both ground and space-based quantum technologies. Our ambition here will be to build really the first professional system that exists in the world that will be providing unbreakable trusted communications that would be combining the best of the two worlds, of the quantum world, but also of the traditional cybersecurity world. And the idea would be to offer this for secure governmental communications and data communications, for tele secure telecommunication networks, for data centers, and for our critical infrastructures. This, of course, we will do uh, thanks to our quantum industry and also to telecom industry and the space industry. And therefore, we expect by investing in these kinds of technologies where we think that we'll be able to put more than 1 billion euro for the next seven years, we do expect that our quantum industry will also have a significant competitiveness advantage by doing so. And since we are talking about industry, let me also present you the third big uh, pillar of our strategy, which is about creating and promoting the emergence of a competitive and innovative European industrial quantum ecosystem 
uh, which, as I said, is the third pillar of our quantum strategy. So today I'm pleased. I mean, I, I'm very, very pleased to see that our industrial players, which include a number of startups, which include SMEs and our industry, have already come together and have created the European Quantum Industry Consortium. This is one of the latest I mean, achievements that uh, the quantum uh, industry has come together to achieve, to, uh, to put in place. And as I said, we are very, very happy about that because now they are working really on drafting the quantum technology and innovation roadmaps, which will be our essential roadmaps to use during uh, the, uh, the uh, Horizon Europe, but also during the other investments that we are planning. So we are expecting also that this quantum industry consortium will be able to promote significant industrial private investments in quantum, facilitate the development of a truly uh, European quantum ecosystem, and will play a, a leading role in quantum standardization in all the areas that I mentioned before, because we need to have a leading role in Europe also in, uh, from a global perspective to be able to influence what will happen in technology domain in the next few years and in the next 10 years in general. Yet in parallel with this, we will also support the development of a very advanced experimental and testing infrastructure where European research and technology organizations and other open innovation labs can enable an industry transition towards quantum technologies and large innovation capacity building. Finally, we are also working all together, in particular from a union perspective, to be able to develop a quantum technologies equity fund under the European Innovation Council, very, very likely, that could combine not only European, but also national or even private funds. And this will be allowing us to better support the most promising startups and SMEs that we have, to be able to scale them up, but also to give them direct access to capital uh, and to uh, enhance their access to finance in general to Europe, from European private investors too. To be able to build all this, to be able to build this thrive, a thriving quantum ecosystem will also be, um, it will also be absolutely necessary to invest on knowledge and skills acquisition for the next generation of European scientists, for the next generation of our engineers in quantum, to protect intellectual property rights and make sure that we can also cooperate from a global perspective with the best countries in the world, be it the US, be it Japan, be it others, so be it Canada, by the way, so as to be able to have a leading role also on in quantum, uh, a leading world role in quantum. But these are really not enough. If we want to realize the quantum decade, we need to make sure that the investments are not only European, but they are also national. And in this respect, I'm very, very pleased to see, for example, that Germany has already uh, uh, announced and is, uh, recent, has recently launched your uh, 2 billion investment plan in quantum computing and quantum technologies in general. I'm also proud to say that uh, uh, quantum was one of the areas that we have been promoting from the member states in their recovery um, uh, plans. This is the next generation facility that we have been putting in place uh, for being able to, over climb, uh, to, over, um, to overcome, I would say, the pandemic crisis. And I'm also glad to say that we have seen now several member states that have decided to take quantum in their recovery plans and to make several investments in the quantum technologies. So this is where we are heading towards. So I believe that from a European perspective, but also from a national perspective, with all the ingredients of success that are there to be able to be successful in the quantum decade, we have a very vibrant research community that is unveiled by many, many countries of the world. We have a very dynamic startup ecosystem that is already there and is functioning. And our industry is now mobilizing and organizing itself around the ecosystem approach that I mentioned before. We're all investing massively in quantum technologies and in quantum plants, both nationally, but also from a European perspective. And our plants are both bold and ambitious uh, at national and European level. So let's work all together to make it happen and I'm pretty sure, as I said, that this decade is going to be also a quantum decade. Thank you very, very much. I wish you a most successful event. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Thomas Kodas, and this is certainly going to be a quantum day. And uh, well, thank you for a very inspiring and also clear uh, outlook on the strategies and pillars you're pursuing from the uh, EU side. Thank you very much, and uh, well, bye-bye to Brussels for the moment. Thank you.